All right, everyone. Now, this week's one of my favorite weeks to talk about histology. However, I know that that is not a love shared by all. So let's talk through ways to organize it and think about all of these images. I think realistically what gets students in trouble is they try to memorize them and just stare at the pictures over and over again and say, this is this, this is this, this is this. Instead, tell the story. Talk about why it would be good at a certain function to then think about, okay, where in my body do I need to do that function? Or recognize what do I commonly see in here because then I can remember what category it falls into. So we're gonna map out all of the tissue types in this video to help kind of organize and then you can just narrow yourself down by just asking some simple yes or no questions to then figure out which type of tissue you're dealing with. All right, so here we go. Okay, so our first area that we're gonna go into is going to be our linings. So if you have a liner, that means you're facing some apical surface. So you have somewhere where you have open space. That open space could be external environment. So this could be the, the epithelium that is facing the outside air. But those also could be like the tubes in your body. There's also an internal space in there called a lumen. So that's a free space or a cavity. So if you were to buy an anatomy coloring book, everywhere you see a black line that delineates like here's a structure before changing to another structure, that's epithelium. That's a liner. That's a boundary. So when you're looking at those boundaries, you're always going to find a spot that's going to look like kind of like white and empty. And then you'll go until you see something that looks different. And then between there, there's cells. So if you were to look at a liner and you want to set up a boundary, that's exactly what you would do. It would just be a bunch of cells. You want to make sure that anything that goes through that liner is going to go through you. You have say of what enters your body. And so you're going to set it up kind of looking like, I always picture it kind of like sandbags in a flood. You're just stacking cells and cells and cells. And that's all it is. So epithelium is a bunch of cells. They're all anchored in place by a basement membrane. There could be more than one layer, depends on what kind of function you want. So if you were to split this up, you can have your protective ends versus being for exchange. If you're looking at doing exchange, you only wanna to have to go through one cell layer, but you can change what that shape or how thick that cell is to change the speed of how quickly you can do that exchange. So let's go through each of those. So we'll start with the ones we're gonna be the fast, and then we're gonna work our way over to slower. So if you want fast, so all of these ones that do exchange are gonna be simple, so one layer. The fastest version, you're gonna make it squished and flat looking. So in that case, it's gonna look something like this. So you have one layer of cells up here at the top. It's gonna to be a really quick exchange. So this would be places like in the alveoli in the lungs where you're gonna do gas exchange or the capillaries where you're dropping off nutrients and picking up waste. You wanna do those quickly. So you want one layer and you're gonna have that one layer be really thin. And those thin cells look squished, so the word for that is squamous. So simple squamous, one layer, thin, you're looking at the nuclei being squished down. Okay, so with simple squamous, it's pretty predictable what you're exchanging, you don't have to think about it a lot. Sometimes you do need to think about it a little bit more, so we're gonna make the tall cell just a little bit taller, and they're gonna look more box-like. And so again, it's hard to sometimes see the shape of the cell, so you look at the nuclei. The nuclei in these ones are gonna be round, because the cell itself is a little cube. So this is called cuboidal. And this would be somewhere where, okay, you know that it's something that you're not worried about harming you. It's something that you normally have in the body. You're just trying to predict which level you need to have. So this is what happens at the kidneys. The kidneys get a sample of your blood and then they make adjustments, depending on if you have enough calcium, potassium, things like that. And then you can secrete things that you don't need or you have extra of, and that'll end up in our urine. Or you could say, wait, we need to keep that. And you're going to reabsorb it into your body. And so we're just making it a little taller to do those kind of thought processes, if you will. Now there are some times where we are letting things in the body that are fresh to us, that is new, and it could be a pathogen. So we're gonna make it the tallest option of those simple. And so this is gonna be a simple columnar. So if you look at these ones, it kind of goes like a little triangle up and over. And the nuclei and these are gonna mostly look like a little oval. So that's what you're looking for is the shape of that nucleus again. And these cells are gonna be stretched out, so they're gonna be taller and they are wider, so they're columnar in shape. So then, Simple columnar epithelium would be lining things like your digestive tract. So they would be along the intestines, for example. And that allows us to do that exchange, but really think about it, maybe even process some things as they come in. All right, now, as mentioned, 
you're also going to have areas for protection. If it's for protective functions, then we're going to have this be stratified. And then under the stratified, you're going to utilize the same shape plans that we had here. Now it gets a little tricky sometimes to identify them because it could look a little different depending on where you're at in the layers. So you're always aiming for the shape that you see at the top. So something like this, see how they look a little boxy towards the bottom and then as you work your way up, they start to look squished. That's still squamous. You name it for the shape that you see at the top. So stratified squamous is the one that will have the most options in cells. So this is really good for places with a lot of rubbing. So if you were to shed off the top few layers, you're not worried about it. You have tons of other ones below it. Now it can come in two varieties. You have this one here where you see nuclei all the way up to the top even. So these are all alive. These are all living cells. So you're going to want to make sure you have them places that keep you keep moist, where there's rubbing. So it would be things like in the mouth, along the esophagus as you swallow, lining the anus, lining the vagina, all places with rubbing, but you will keep them moist to keep those cells alive. So it could be non-keratinized, which you see here. Or you can have the keratinized option. This is going to have the top layer be dead. So if you look here, once you see it shift into the lighter color up top, those cells are all dead. You don't see any nuclei. What happens there is a pro process called keratinization. You're going to stuff these cells full of this really tough protein called keratin, which actually makes it water resistant. This is what we see in our skin. So those top layers that are all dead, you can shed them off. You don't worry about it. You do it all the time. Most of the dust in your house is that. So if we're looking at keratinized, dead at the top, no nuclei. So filled with keratin. You can also have stratified cuboidal and stratified columnar. They're just more uh, rare than what you would have for like the stratified squamous. Stratified squamous can be your most common out of the stratified options. Something like this, where you have boxes on top of boxes, that's going to be your stratified cuboidal. You use it in a place like uh, lining sweat glands. So it's still facing the external environment. Those tubes, those lumens are exposed to directly to the surface of your skin. So pathogens could get in there. So we're going to add an extra layer to be protective. And that's also the same with that stratified columnar. So with the stratified columnar epithelium, it's a little tricky, but you can kind of see the nuclei at the bottom all line up and they're usually circular. So those are actually cuboidal looking. But then at the top, you have a row here where the cells are going to have those oval shape or the taller look to them. So we have the columnar. These are only lining the ducts of your sweat glands. And that's the only place you'll find those. So that's going to be your basic setup if you're naming it for shape. Now there are two oddballs. So we'll put those over here. Now, odd as a category is not an official recognition in anatomy, but I like to at least kind of think of them as the odd ones because the naming of them doesn't follow the normal pattern. So usually you'll say something like stratified squamous epithelium or simple cuboidal epithelium. It matches by having a blank for the layers and a blank for the shape, and then you give the category. These ones don't follow that pattern. So your first one is going to be one that looks like it's stratified. You have nuclei all over the place but they're actually all touching the basement membrane. So it's faking being stratified. So we call that one pseudo-stratified. So pseudo meaning false or faking. So it's pseudo-stratified. All of those do touch the bottom. Most of those cells are going to be in columnar in shape, so pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium. The reason why the nuclei are in different places, you have much more variety in the types of cells. See those big spa empty spaces over there? Those are actually goblet cells. They make mucus. That's their other name is a mucus cell. So you have a variety of cells. They end up with different shapes, but they do all anchor to the bottom. Now, how you tell the difference between this one and if it's actually stratified columnar is the fact that it does look like a mess. In a true stratified one, you will have very clear layers. The nuclei line up in rows. In pseudo-stratified, nuclei scattered all over the place. Another interesting feature about this, which I will always include if I show you a pseudo-stratified, is the cilia at the top. So this is a common example of something that you will see in the respiratory tract. So it lines things like the trachea, the nasal cavity, so that way you can secrete that mucus from those goblet cells onto the surface. It can trap any dust particles or debris that you breathe in. And then that cilia can move it to the top of the throat and you can swallow it. You do it all the time, you're just not even aware of it. Now, if you're a smoker, the cilia is damaged, so the way you get all that mucus up that has now caught dust particles and debris is a wet hacky cough, known as a smoker's cough. If you stop smoking, though, it'll come back. And then the other oddball is transitional. It's called transitional because it changes how it looks. 
So it transitions, but they will always have the arch shape to their top of their cells. So it'll have a dome shaped surface. It's lining the urinary system. So it lines the urinary bladder and then the tracks that the tubes that go to it and from it. So the urethra and ureters. And so it changes what it looks like depending on if that structure is filled with fluid or not. So if the urinary bladder is storing fluid, then that's going to get squished down. Once you go to the bathroom, they poof back up. And again, try to use these things throughout your day. So as you go to the bathroom, you're like, okay, my blood is empty now. My transitional epithelium is now poofed back up. Or if you need to go to the bathroom, just think about your epithelium and they're being all squished down against the wall. All right, so those are your epitheliums.